Hello friends, today we are going to discuss about acoustic step deal reflex and reflex decay tests. My name is P.T. Vinayagar. I am an audiologist and speech therapist. So before going to acoustic step deal reflex, we need to know what is reflex. Reflexes are subconscious, substantious, protective mechanism. When you see a dark light, you tend to shrink your eyes to protect your eyes from seeing the dark light. This is done automatically. You are not doing any effort. It is done reflexively. So that is the one of the reflex. Similarly, in human ear, in auditory system, there is a specialized mechanism to protect our hearing. This is a natural mechanism that is called acoustic stepidial reflex. So here acoustic is sound. Whereas stepidial refers to stepidious muscle. This muscle plays a major role in this acoustic reflex. That's why we call it acoustic stepidial reflex. And reflex decay test. It is a special test whether the reflex is maintained for certain time. So this will study in our further slides. So let's move on to our presentation. So introduction. Metz in 1952 measured middle ear impedance and found that it is increased when a loud sound was presented to the opposite ear. That means here impedance, middle ear impedance, impedance is the resistance to the flow of energy. In this case, energy is acoustic energy. So middle ear impedance means how the middle ear is resisting to the flow of sound. And he found it is increased when a loud sound is presented to opposite ear. So when, when a loud sound is presented to right ear, he measured the middle ear impedance in the left ear and he found there is an increase in the impedance. So this is called middle ear muscle reflex. He named it as middle ear muscle reflex. This in increased impedance is due to middle ear muscle reflex, which stiffened the middle ear system. That means the ossicular chain is stiffened in such a way that not allowing the sound further into the middle ear. So this stiffen, this mechanism, so protecting the middle ear, protecting the ear from damage from loud sound, from hearing loud sound. So this is acoustic stepial reflex. He named middle ear muscle reflexes. What are the middle ear muscle that we will see? So these two are the muscles involved in the middle ear, tensor tympani and the stapedius muscle. So tensor tympani muscle is, this is the anterior side. So we are seeing the middle ear. So you see the tympanic membrane, malleus, incus and the steps. The cochlea is removed. So from here we are seeing. So this is the anterior side. So from the nose, we have one tube, special tube, that is the nasopharynx. So this is the orifice of nasopharynx. You see, this is the orifice, orifice of, that is opening of eustachian tube, pressure equalization tube. This will constantly give the air into the middle ear. So just above this opening, we have the tensor tympani muscle. So the body of the muscle is located just above the orifice of the eustachian tube. So in this muscle, the tendon, the tendon of the muscle extends to the manubrium of the malleus. So the handle of the malleus, the man, manubrium of the malleus, it is attached to the, the tendon of the tensor tympani is attached to the manubrium of malleus. So this wall is the anterior and medial. So medial is towards the brain, so towards the cochlea is medial. So this is the anterior medial wall. So when this muscle contracts, it will pulls the malleus towards anteriorly and medially, front and this side. So anteriorly and medially it will pull the uh, handle, handle of the malleus. Now we are going to see the other muscle that is stapedius muscle, where it is located and where it is innervated. So this tapedius muscle lies in the pyramidal prominence 
this bone from here posterior bone from here it is anteriorly moving and it is attached attached to the neck of the steps so posterior part of the neck of the steps it is attached to the posterior region of neck of the steps so steps is the smallest bone we know and the stapedius muscle attaching the steps is the smallest muscle so these two muscles are majorly involved in uh, activating or in the mechanism of acoustic reflex but here why we call it as acoustic stapedius reflex so among these two this stapedius is the major role in playing the uh, reflex mechanism so this tensor tympani we know that uh, any reflex will have the effector effector is the muscle so when you, uh, i say in the first slide that in a dark light when you see a dark light you tend to shrink your eyes so shrinking the eyes is the effector muscle here tensor uh, stiffening the membrane stiffening the articular chain is the uh, effector that is tensor tympani muscle is the effector so tensor tympani is innervated by Uh, it is attached to the manubrium of malleus innervated by cranial nerve 5 that is the trigeminal nerve whereas the stapedius muscle attached to the posterior neck of the steps which is innervated by the cranial nerve 7 that is the facial nerve so how the uh, this reflex is activating what is the mechanism whether there is any pathway and uh, how the reflexes will be different for different pathologies that we are going to discuss so next is the reflex pathway here you see this is the reflex pathway so this is right ear and this is left this is the midline it is the neuraxis this is the midline so uh, if you see the screen your uh, left hand will correspond to the, the in the screen it is right because the screen is just opposite to you so this is the right and this is left so here uh, two cochleas are uh, shown so that means there is involvement of two ears okay and the abbreviations are given cranial nerve whatever it is so first i am giving sound to right ear so it will stimulate my right cochlea okay then the signal is transduced the signal is uh, conducted through my eighth nerve that is stato acoustic nerve or auditory nerve and it reaches the ventral cochlear nucleus this is the ventral cochlear nucleus of right ear and it is uh, pass on to the medial superior olivary complex now it is at the level of brain stem medial superior olivary complex now again it goes to the motor nucleus of seventh nerve so you see this is seventh till now it is by eighth nerve whereas now it is reaching the seventh nerve motor nucleus now the signal will be motor signal motor signal to facial nerve okay so the other pathway is from ventral cochlear nucleus again it reaches the motor nucleus of seven finally it will reaches the stapedius muscle that is attached to the posterior neck of the stapes that we already discussed okay so there will be two pathways one is cochlea cochlear uh, ventral cochlear nucleus through eighth nerve again to medial superior olivary complex to motor nucleus of seven and the stapedius muscle the other pathway is cochlea ventral cochlear nucleus and directly to motor nucleus of seven and stapedius muscle so there there is two ipsilateral pathway same side now we move on to contralateral pathway so again the cochlea stimulated through eighth nerve to ventral cochlear nucleus to medial superior olivary complex of same side now here it is going to cross over decussate to the left ear yes fibers is decussating to left ear left motor nucleus of 7 that is the facial nerve now the motor signal will be so the, there is other pathway from ventral cochlear nucleus to directly going to other ear of 
medial superior olivary complex from there again it will reach to motor nucleus now this is a there will be motor signal generated it will supply to our stapedius muscle of the left ear it is attached to the posterior neck of the stapes of left ear so there are two pathways cochlea ventral cochlear nucleus medial superior olivary complex to the motor nucleus of seventh nerve and stapedius muscle and cochlea ventral cochlear nucleus medial superior olivary complex of same side to uh, directly to medial superior olivary complex of other side and motor nucleus of seven stapedius muscle there are two pathways so two con uh, ipsilateral pathway two contralateral pathway so when a sound is given to right ear the phenomenon the acoustic reflex phenomenon will be activated in both ears so this is a bilateral phenomena it is very important Re acoustic reflex is a bilateral phenomenon so for study purpose we have separated each uh, pathway but when a sound is given both the uh, pathways are activated simultaneously so we'll move on to the next slide so this red indicates the ipsilateral whereas the green indicates the contralateral pathway so instrumentation so it is quite same as the tympanometry because it is a subtest from the uh, tympanometry so you see the first one is the manometer meter is mean reading so it will show the mano is pressure reading so it will show the pressure why it is needed here because we cannot directly test the stapedial reflex we have to do the tympanometry first and we have to proceed to acoustic stapedial reflex so when you do the tympanogram you will get tpp called as tympanometric peak pressure peak pressure that means in that pressure the admittance of the middle ear is maximum so your admittance of middle ear is maximum at this tympanometric peak pressure so we need to conduct the acoustic reflex test at this pressure so to main to show the reading we need to have manometer and the pump is to monitor the to give the constant tympanometric peak pressure so manometer is to monitor pressurization whereas the pump is to maintain the tympanometric peak pressure okay now we moving on to the microphone so microphone is to measure the change in the dv spl so um, here the probe tone this is a continuous tone for example 226 continuous tone will be given so for the, in, uh, when the reflex is activated you need to check whether the admittance is changed that is done by this microphone to measure the spl of probe tone stimulus then reflex activator reflex activator is this is very important you need to differentiate proton and reflex activator reflex activator is the the area of interest that we are going to check whether 500 hertz 1 kilohertz 2 kilohertz that is the reflex activator so we need to clearly uh, differentiate between the proton and the activator activator sometime we call stimulus so in further slide we will understand better so proton and activators need to clearly differentiate proton is the pure tone that is continuously presented in the ear where the response is measured so this 226 or 220 is the standard one because it is very far separated from the activator 500 or 1 kHz or whatever it is the activators are the the area of interest that we are going to stimulate that is the reflex activator so when i give 500 hertz tone that is the activator here it will measure the 226 is a continuous tone it will keep on go but it is activator will be presented only during the presentation of stimulus or broadband noise when we, if we use broadband noise so now this is very important acoustic stapedial reflex response growth here you see this is a left ear and i i told you the peak pressure here the dapa is peak pressure the 95 is the peak pressure tympanometric peak pressure at which we are going to check the acoustic reflex so this x axis here it is the time 
and why is the admittance admittance of the sound to middle ear whether we are going to check the change in the admittance of the middle ear during the presentation of loud sound so now uh, 70 dB now here activator is the 1 kilohertz 1000 hertz is the activator whereas the proton is 226 hertz okay here we are going to check the left ear fc so now the baseline the continuous proton is going inside so admittance is measured okay the admittance is measured and i am giving a now i am going to give 70 db 1 kilohertz sound so the reflex is measured but there is no change there is no change in the admittance the proton is continuously going even though the sound is presented so 70 db 1 kilohertz is presented there is no change only 0.0.01 change in the admittance okay now i increase the intensity to 75 db so 75 db so now the baseline the continuous proton is going then now we are going to present the activator 1 kilohertz to and again it baseline there is a no change similarly it is almost same as the 70 db so admittance is change 0.01 the amplitude of response is 0.01 okay so i have to increase the intensity so 5 db i increased 80 db now the baseline is measured it is uh, 226 uh, proton is going now i am presenting the 80 db tone again it comes to baseline after the offset of the stimulus once the st stimulus is off it is coming to the baseline so during the present only during the presentation of sound there is a reduction in the admittance of the sound to middle ear so that is 0.03 is the amplitude of the response now i got the reflex is activated and measured very well so i have since it is a threshold i need to do it again so i will present the atdb again and i will see the whether the change is again repeating same okay and if it is repeated same now this is the threshold now i need to increase the intensity to 85 db so the baseline is measured so again the same uh, baseline is that is 226 hertz is going inside baseline is there now 1 kilohertz tone is presented to so now the reflex is activated there is a change in the reduction in the admittance of the middle ear so now we see the morphology is increased from here to here so the amplitude is increased 0.05 the amplitude of the response when i increase in 90 db again the baseline the present now the activator 1 kilohertz to again coming to the baseline that is offset once the stimulus is off it is again reaching the baseline but the amplitude is increased the morphology is increased 0.08 when i increase in 95 again the baseline 226 hertz is continuously going now the activator 1 kilohertz of 95 db again it coming to baseline the reflex is activated only during the presentation of sound and the amplitude is increase 0.09 so now the threshold is 80 db my threshold is 80 db reflex threshold is 80 db but to confirm it reflex i need to check the improvement and to at least by 5 db for 85 db i need to check whether there is a improvement in the morphology so this improvement in the morphology of the reflex which tells me that it is a confirmed reflex so this is called reflex response growth when you increase the intensity you need to see the um, improvement in the amplitude of the response now probe ear and activator ear this is very important so probe ear is the probe tone in which ear you, uh, you are giving the 226 hertz probe tone so here you see so uh, this is the probe tone yeah here this is here we are giving 226 hertz this is the probe tone so that ear is the probe ear see if you are going to record if this is the right ear so i am giving right ear probe tone that is 226 226 hertz whereas activator for example 1 kilohertz is also given in the same ear so this is 
ipsi so for ipsilateral recording the propton 226 hertz and the reflex activator both are presented to the same ear that is for ipsilateral for contralateral recording the propton 226 hertz is given to the right ear whereas the activator is given to the opposite ear from here left ear i'll give using supraoral headphone i will give the 1 kilohertz activator to left ear and i'll measure the reflex in right ear so this is for contralateral you see the ipsilateral activator stimulus presented to probe ear whereas in contralateral activator stimulus that is 1 kilohertz presented to opposite ear 1 kilohertz is a Uh, in this case we are one class is uh, talking about one class so now this is the uh, reflex how we depict the reflex results so probe ear right ear left ear right ear ipsi so in this case the propton 226 hertz probe propton and the activator that is for example one class both are presented in right ear so this is right ipsi similarly for left ear the propton 226 hertz and the activator 1 kilohertz both are presented in the same ipsi so left ipsi whereas in contra the probe the probe um, propton is 226 hertz in the right ear whereas the activator that is activator is given 1 kilohertz is given to the opposite ear this is contra similarly here the the propton 226 hertz is in the left ear whereas the activator that is 1 kilohertz will be given in the opposite ear that is right ear so this is left contra whereas here it is right contra okay so in further slides if we have a uh, a dim marking of a black that is that is depicting the elevated reflex threshold like 105 or 110 that is elevated reflex threshold for example whereas the dark black color represents the absent reflexes so this is very important to understand so we'll move on to the next slide so advantage of ipsilateral and contralateral condition why we are doing this ipsilateral and contralateral different whether it is having any own advantage yes For ipsilateral reflex, it is sensitive to middle ear effects. That is, both the proton and the activator is in the same ear. That is, a, uh, for uh, to record, we need to have a very good middle ear functioning. And also, in ease of use in young children, as it involves one ear at a time. We know that for uh, in case of screening tympanometry, we use single. side that is for if only if lateral recording for contralateral it is sensitive to crossed pathways that means uh, the midbrain intraaxial extraaxial lesion can also be uh, checked using the contralateral pathways and also less susceptible to artifact that is uh, your propton 226 hertz propton and the uh, activator 1 kilohertz both are separated well so there is left uh, less susceptible we know that propton is in, in right ear then the activator will be in given in left ear for contralateral recording and more normative for contralateral recording is available that is also an advantage now for different disorders how, how we get the uh, acoustic stapedial reflex thresholds So in case one cochlear hearing loss, the pyotone audiometry result is given. So hearing sensitivity within normal limits in right ear, whereas left ear is having 50 dB hearing loss of cochlear hearing loss. Okay, this is cochlear hearing loss of 50 dB for 1 kilohertz. Whatever given is 1 kilohertz. The example whatever we are seeing is 1 kilohertz. So what is the expected acoustic reflex threshold? So now I am going to check the first right ear. The right ipsi i am going to check that means the 226 hertz propton and the activator in this case one kilohertz both is presented to the right ear so right ear we are having normal ear most probably i have to get normal re acoustic reflex threshold we'll see yes this is normal 
acoustic reflex threshold. So now I am moving on to the left ear. The left ear if see that means the, the proton and the activator is giving both will be given in the same ear in left ear. Now left ear is having 50 dB hearing loss. This is impaired ear, cochlear hearing loss. So now I should get some change. So most probably I will get absent or elevated reflex. Yes, I am getting elevated reflex in the left EPC. Now I am moving on to the contact. So here, this is very important. Here the proton is in the right ear. Proton is in the right ear. That is 226 hertz is in the right ear. Whereas the activator, 1 kilohertz activator is in the, now we are going to give in the impaired ear. That is 50 dB hearing loss, flat 50 dB hearing loss in the left ear. So now I will get some changes, most probably elevated. Yes, I am getting the elevated reflex. Now moving on to the other ear. That is, um, here the uh, probe is in the left ear. That is impaired ear of 50 dB hearing loss. Whereas the activator is in the, that is 1 kilohertz will be given in right ear. So most probably I will get the normal response. Yes, I am getting the normal response. Now you see there is um, some pattern. It is a diagonal pattern. This is diagonal pattern. So this is the diagonal pattern. And we call it as sound effect. Yes, this is called as sound effect. That means whenever I whenever I record in the whenever the probe tone is in the impaired ear. So, uh, you will get this effect, that is, uh, in whenever the uh, proton is in the impaired ear, if you get the elevated or absent reflex, that is called sound effect, sound effect, okay, this is a diagonal pattern. Now, we will move on to the, uh, no, no, this is uh, whenever the activator, whenever the activator is given to the uh, impaired ear, here you see 1 kilohertz turn is given to the same ear. So here you will get absent reflexes. Here the right ear, proton is in the right ear, whereas the activator is in the left ear. Whenever the activator is in the impaired ear, if you get this type of reflex that is called sound effect. Okay. Now moving on to next case. Here also cochlear hearing loss. Right ear showing profound cochlear hearing loss. This is very significant hearing loss. I cannot activate the reflex in this ear. And left ear having moderately severe sensor neural hearing loss of 65 dBHL. This is also for 1 kilohertz. Okay. Now what is my expected acoustic reflex threshold? I'll see. For right ear, profound cochlear hearing For damn sure, I will not get the reflex right ipc the proton and the activator is in the same ear i won't get reflex yes i'm getting absent reflex okay now i'm moving on to left so left is having 65 db of cochlear hearing loss there will be some uh, change i mostly will get elevated yes this is elevated reflex then moving on to the uh, the now the pro proton is in the right ear whereas the activator is from the left ear so now mostly I will get the elevator reflex. Yes, the activator 1 kilohertz is from the left ear whereas the proton is in the right ear. Now I am moving on to the other. So here the proton is in the left ear. The proton is in the left ear whereas the activator is from right ear. I know that right ear I cannot activate. Activate the reflex since he is having a profound hearing loss. So for damn sure I am getting, I will get absent reflex yes again i am getting absent reflex so this also follows the diagonal pattern you see the diagonal pattern here so this is also a sound effect in both ears both ears having a cochlear hearing loss inability to activate the uh, or uh, there is an effect in activating the acoustic reflex so now Moving on to other disorders, facial nerve paralysis. Now, 
we know that our stapedius muscle is innervated by facial nerve that is seventh nerve so any problem in the facial nerve which will involves in the stapedius muscle then it will lead to affect our acoustic reflex threshold because our effector organ is the stapedius muscle very important organ the stapedius muscle only contracting our ossicular chain stiffening the ossicular chain such a way that no sound is letting into the middle ear so in case of right here this right bells palsy okay so the pure tone audiometer is showing bilateral normal hearing okay bilateral normal hearing but the right one having bells palsy which is in this case uh, considering that it is involving the stapedius muscle so for right ear now i am going to check the uh, right ipsi so the proton and the activator for example 1 kilohertz both is giving in the same ear i will i won't get reflex most probably because the affected side is involved yes i am getting absent reflexes then moving on to the left ear left ear is having normal hearing no uh, pathology so most probably i'll get normal yes i am getting normal acoustic stapedius reflex threshold now moving on to the contralateral here very important proton is in the right ear it is 226 hertz is in the right ear whereas the activator is in the left ear so i should uh, i should get most probably um, absent you see yes because it is in the affected side we are going to we are recording in the affected side only activator is in the left uh, then moving on to the other side that is the your proton 226 hertz where we are recording is in the left ear normal side but the activator that is one kilohertz is from the uh, right side yes so most what i am getting i am getting a normal hearing normal acoustic stapedial reflex threshold so here it is follows some pattern again it is follows some pattern so what pattern this is called probe effect or vertical pattern we call it as vertical pattern and it is probe effect so whenever the probe is in inserted to the affected side so in right ip c the proton 226 ear probe ear is in the affected side when i check the left contra that time also i am the probe is inserted in the right side so whenever the probe is inserted to the affected side if you are getting absent or elevated reflex this is called probe effect whereas here in right contra the probe is in the left ear it is the unaffected ear the normal ear the time you are getting normal response this is called probe effect then moving on to conductive hearing loss so in conductive hearing loss we know that uh, for acoustic reflex we need to have a good functioning of middle ear so even a slight conductive component may result in absent or elevated reflex threshold so here you see there is a normal hearing and uh, left ear is having serous otitis media of 20 db airborne gap in 500 hertz here the activator is 500 we are going to check in 500 that's why you mentioned 500 hertz low frequency so now we will see 500 hertz activator right ear absolutely normal hearing same side i am going to check it see most probably i will get normal yes i am getting normal whereas left side what i am going to do is the proton is in the left ear that is the 226 hertz is in the left ear whereas the activator that is in this case 500 hertz is from the right ear so can i am able to get most probably i will get or elevated i am not getting absent because of the inability to record due to this conductive pathology okay now i am moving on to the contra that is proton is in the right ear here it is a proton is in the right ear and i am i have to stimulate activate from the opposite ear that is left activator is from the left ear and activator is in this case 500 hertz most probably i since it is a 20 db airborne gap i need to activate high intensity so most probably elevated i will get yes i am getting elevated 
now contala so here the propton is in the left ear propton is in the probe here is in the left ear whereas the activator is from the right ear it is activator from the in this case activator is 500 hertz what i am getting i am getting absent reflex so what this pattern is called this is called probe effect whenever the probe is inserted into the affected ear so here you see the left ear the probe is inserted in the uh, left ear see the probe is in the left ear and the activator is also in the left ear that time i am not getting reflex and here in right ear the probe is in the left ear whereas the activator is from the right ear that time also i am getting absent reflex so this is probe effect and the sound effect or this one is having the sound effect so here you see this 20 db of hearing loss so here i need to activate so here i need to activate the reflex when i when the activator 500 hertz is given to the left ear in this condition i need to give more sound so i need to give because of 20 db attenuation is happening i need to give more sound so here sound effect whereas here the uh probe effect whenever i record in the uh, affected its side that will having probe effect so here probe and sound effect both effect are present and in case of mixed hearing loss more prob probably you will get absent reflexes depending on the pathology now we will moving on to so in case of in conductive hearing loss if you get a case of a tympanometric perforation having a around 40 to 50 db of hearing uh, conductive hearing loss so there you won't get any admittance value that means the ability of the uh, the sound going inside the middle ear because since there is a perforation you only get the volume of the middle ear volume of volume of the canal and the middle ear so there your ear canal volume plays a major role so there that time you cannot test for the acoustic reflex now we moving on to the central nervous system disorders now actually we are going inside the cranium or moving higher centers in the cochlea nerve then the cochlear nucleus in that level we are going to any pathology affecting the central nervous system and what are the findings so first disorder is the vestibular schwannoma so why it is called vestibular schwannoma schwannoma homa is cancer so schwannoma is a, a cancer tumor arising in the schwann cells of the vestibular branch of the acoustic nerve so we know that acoustic nerve that is our strato acoustic nerve so strato is from the static balance from the vestibular system so here the most common site is the vestibular branch of our auditory nerve so it is vestibular schwannoma so uh, what is the symptom uh, that there is presence of asymmetrical hearing sensory neural hearing loss so vestibular schwannoma will have asymmetrical sensory neural hearing loss or acoustic reflex threshold in ears with vestibular schwannoma are likely to be elevated or absent so we will see in next slide here you see the left vestibular schwannoma case so here the uh, the pyotron finding is right mild to moderate snhl of 40 db hearing loss of 1 kilohertz okay sensory neural hearing loss of 1 kilohertz okay whereas the left is moderate to severe sloping sensory neural hearing loss of 50 db threshold in 1 kilohertz so there is a 10 db difference in the 1 kilohertz and uh, right and left ear so what is the expected acoustic reflex threshold first time checking the right ear the activator and the propton is in the same ear so right ear is having mild to moderate most probably i will get elevated threshold because the right ear there is no schwannoma yes i am getting i am getting a normal threshold whereas in left ear see left side is the affected ear side i am getting absent reflex so absent reflex for 50 db is uncommon then moving on to the contra so left contra so uh, my my propton is in the right ear so propton is in the right ear whereas the activator is in the left ear that is 1 kilohertz activator 
so what uh, uh, right here is i am recording most probably i will get absent yes i am getting absent now the proton is in the left ear whereas the activator that is one clutch from the right ear now what i will get most probably i will get absent or elevated we'll see now i am getting a present that is normal so here the uh, in affected side but the activator is in from the right side from mild to moderate sensitivity so this is also following the same again the uh, diagonal pattern so uh, we move on to the other disorders of central nervous system that is auditory neuropathy spectrum disorders here it is often absent or elevated so here the site of lesion is most probably the um, inner hair cell synapse or the nerve so all the, all of the three sites are involved any anywhere the pathology may anywhere the loci may be present so here we need to see the intact outer hair cell functioning and the absent abr that is the classical uh, uh, criteria classical condition that we follow in auditory neuropathy so we need to see the other test also where a acoustic stability reflex may be present or absent or elevated now the next one is extra axial brain stem disorder extra axial what is axial axial is neuro axis that is a brain stem extra axial is extra above uh, beyond this uh, brain stem so any structure aside the brain stem for example pons or aside the brain stem extra axial so uh, meningioma located on cp angle of the brain stem the cerebellar pontine angle of the brain stem will have the same effect so previous slide we got sound effect that is whenever the activator is to the affected ear that is left ear activator is given to the left ear that time we will get absent reflex it is called sound effect similarly we will get sound effect for acoustic neuroma that is here in extraaxial brain stem disorder now moving on to the intraaxial brain stem lesion now this is within the axis within the axis that is where the point of decussion happens so within the axis so this is very important may affect the acoustic reflex threshold if the reflex pathways are compromised that means any of the pathway here the reflex uh, ipc may be compromised or contra may be compromised or both can be compromised depending on the locus of the disorder lesion here intraaxial brain stem lesion the pertum says normal hearing here the expected reflex threshold if contra pathways are affected that means most probably contralateral side will be affected let's see so for ipsilateral right ear i am getting normal hearing ipsi left ear i am getting again i am getting a normal threshold whereas contralateral like most probably i should get some problem or absent reflex yes absent reflex in contralateral pathway again for left contralateral also i am getting right contralateral also i am getting absent so here this is called horizontal pattern so here following the horizontal pattern only if the contra pathways are affected if contra pathways that is important if both the pathways are involved both the pathways are affected then you will get the dark in the all the four all the four are dark and that is called absent in all the four is called as full house pattern with abnormal abr so we should not uh, only we are not looking for a acoustic stability reflex we need to have other test report also so with abnormal abr we say full house pattern this is called full house pattern or horizontal pattern then moving on to superior canal dehiscence so why why it is coming superior canal it is in vestibular system right so vestibular system is uh, involved in superior canal dehiscence so, uh, so some vestibular uh, symptoms will be appear yes so a dehiscence of the superior semicircular canal may result in symptom of what i go oscillopsia or disequilibrium in response to sound or change in air pressure this is very important change in air pressure so it will result in conductive hearing loss 
will result in conductive hearing loss because here this is lack of bone or the dehiscence will lead to a third membrane in the superior canal we know we have only two membrane round window and oval window whereas it, uh, it will form a third window in this uh, lesion so acoustic reflex threshold will be normal with conductive loss we form that conductive hearing loss will have some abnormality right we able to record uh, there is a sound effect for greater than 20 db so but in this case you are getting normal so this warrants me that middle ear is middle ear is not alone responsible for conductive hearing loss so there if there is a problem in superior sim canal dehiscence then also i am getting uh, yeah, for example for 30 db conductive hearing loss in the affected ear but i am getting a normal acoustic reflex threshold provided with the symptoms of a tigo disequilibrium and the low response from low amplitude in the vamp response the radiological finding we need to see all this so that time i am i may suspect for superior canal dehiscence and that's also differentiate from otosclerosis so most probably low frequency hearing loss with a uh, conductive hearing loss we may suspect for uh, otosclerosis but in that case your acoustic reflex will be absent but here it is normal now moving on to clinical applications of acoustic reflex so the acoustic reflex threshold can be used as a cross check with behavioral audiogram in the diagnosis of hearing loss in young children so young children may feign or may exaggerate for uh, any purpose for any beneficiary purpose so that time we can cross check the acoustic reflex threshold and for adults also they may exaggerate for example a person who is having a normal hearing who exaggerate to severe to profound hearing loss uh, when i check in uh, acoustic stapial reflex it shows 90 85 db around 80 85 db that means so it's a normal hearing so it is to cross check with the exaggerated hearing loss or false hearing in case of adults and also to compare with the pure tone and speech recognition thresholds for example that i the pure tone i am getting uh normal hearing whereas the speech scores is around 30 d 30 percentage it is a, is a very significantly reduced the time i may suspect i may use the acoustic reflex threshold and i will cross check and also in patients with cochlear implants to assess the device function so here electrically evoked stapial reflex so the uh, in cochlear implants the sound stimulation through electrical impulse and the reflex is recorded and also to predict the lower and upper stimulus level there the most comfortable level the current level what has to be set in case of young children they may not cooperate for the test so in using this stapedis reflex we can find out the the level at which we are going to set during the uh, programming of the cochlear implant now we are finished with the acoustic reflex now we are moving on to the next special test that is acoustic reflex dk test here only one different is dk so we tested the acoustic reflex now we are going to give the uh, activator uh, we discussed the 1 kilohertz and 500 hertz so we are going to give the activator to sustained period of time so uh, the reflex has to maintain for that sustained period of time that is the this uh, test so for what purpose we are testing because this assess the retro cochlear involvement so is beyond the cochlea that we discuss the pathway beyond the cochlea we need to check the uh, the ability of the nerve so if in having a if the nerve has any abnormality such as fatigue or adaptation so the the nerve will have the inability to maintain this the reflex for sustained period of time so indicators for retrocochlear involvement so for whom i need to suspect that he may have retrocochlear involvement asymmetrical pure tone behavioral threshold asymmetrical word recognition scores or scores that are poorer than expected give her pure tone threshold i already told that a normal hearing with poor 30 percentage of scores uh, in speech that uh, that may indicate that he may have retrocochlear involvement 
then unilateral tinnitus this is very important unilateral tinnitus for a long period of time may be a sign of a growing uh, tumor then a report of dizziness and absent or elevated acoustic septal reflex so we will move on to the acoustic reflex dk test yes this is how the result is depicted you see here the a is the stimulus the x axis is the time so from 0 to 10 seconds then the the y axis is the reflex of the reflex of the the magnitude of the reflex okay here it is showing upside down whereas previously we in reflex uh, we see the reduction in the admittance reduction in the admittance that is baseline reduction in the admittance of the uh, admittance of middle ear and to the again it will baseline after the offset of the stimulus this is onset this is offset here this is we are showing in the upside down in instrument it usually shows as downside only okay so now here a is the stimulus so what is this presentation level if I get 100 dB as the acoustic reflex threshold, previously we saw that 80 dB we discussed. Similarly, if you are getting 100 dB of a reflex, you need to set the presentation level for reflex decay 10 dB above the threshold. For example, if it is an activator of 500 Hz, for 500 Hz activator, I need to give 110 is my presentation. So 110 is presented for sustained period of time, that is 10, mil 10 seconds. So now the uh, I am giving the tone. So the, now the baseline is there. Now I am giving the tone. It is the activator 500 hertz for example. Now for 10 seconds I am going to give. So now we are coming the baseline. So you see here this is the amplitude of the magnitude of the response. This is reflex. This is 50% of the response. This is 0%. So, for uh, the reflex is activated, so for the entire duration of the stimulus, the reflex is maintained for 100%. So, this is normal. That means 100% of the initial magnitude is maintained for complete stimulus. Now, here you see, now the again uh, stimulus is activated for 10 seconds. Okay. So now the tone is presented entire for the entire second, but the reflex is uh, getting fatigue as the time progress it is coming down and down and down. At last, it reaches around 50 percentage, but it is not reaching the 50 percentage very soon. It, uh, the last only it is getting. So this is also considered as normal. That means there is no decay. So we report as negative. So here the report is negative, the B is negative, whereas C is also the DK is not present, so negative, and it is normal. So the, the initial magnitude decreases from the initial magnitude by less than 50%. So the magnitude is decreased by less than 50%. Okay. So it is not more than 50%, less than 50%. So at this, at this time only it is around reaching the 50%. But here you see the third one that is D, my, my activator is activated, that is the 500 Hz tone at 110 dB is activated. So the tone is continuously presented for 10 seconds. So there is uh, the tone, there is no change in the tone. When the reflex is only getting fatigue, fatigue at this time at 4 milliseconds and at 5 milliseconds it reaches around 50% of the initial magnitude that is initial magnitude is 100% and by 5 seconds it reaches the 50% of the initial magnitude so greater than 50% so the magnitude decrease, decreases from the initial magnitude by more than 50% so 50% more than 50% of the stimulus it is reaching the uh, initial magnitude so any uh, the reflex which is half of its magnitude 
greater than or less than or equal to less than or equal to 5 millisecond before 5 millisecond only if it reaches the 50 percent of its initial magnitude then it is considered as positive so here uh, reflex decay is positive so here positive means affected decay is present inability to maintain so the nerve has some pathology to enable to maintain the the loud sound for sustained period of time so for whom you are getting positive decay it means in any case with eighth nerve disorders having abnormal or positive decay is observed meaning the amplitude of the reflex decreases by half that is 50 percent of its initial magnitude in less than 10 seconds so this is called positive decay and interpreted with reference to activator here this is very important so when i check the if i check the right here we can test in ipsi and contra both so the right ipsi i am checking the activator is in the right here probe one is in the right here activator is also in right here so 10 db above the uh, acoustic reflex threshold so the, this will uh, so uh, the right ear is the activator uh, activator is in right ear so right ipsi is uh, normal whereas if i check contra so if i check contra the proton is in the right ear whereas the activator is in the left ear so if i give left ear the activator so i need to uh, report the result as left contra is negative so when when in which side the activator is there that you need to interpret so by this is the end of the presentation my sincere thanks to all my teachers who taught me audiology hope you enjoyed the video for more videos subscribe our channel thank you